Hey, Mark. Hi, Virg. Welcome to video eight. Hi, Mark Corrali. And I'm Virg Cornelius, and this is our last video. So sad. There are lots of videos to go find us, though. If you want more practice, go into AP Classroom, bottom of the units. There's a review section. You can find all kinds of problems we've done in the past. And, and, and the handouts that go with them. And you should find this handout for today before we get started. So it's a really good point. It'll either be up here in AP Classroom or down there in YouTube. All right. So hopefully you've downloaded this, but we're going to read the problem to you. We're doing a particle motion problem for, for six. And it says, two particles are moving along the x-axis. So as we're visualizing this, that tells me that everything's horizontal movement on the x-axis. For time zero to six inclusive, the position of particle P at time T is given by P of T equals two times the cosine of pi over four times T. Well, the position of particle R at time T is given by R of T equals T cubed minus six T squared plus nine T plus three. Part A, for time zero to six inclusive, find all times T during which particle R is moving to the right. So we've got motion to the right. So that's a, that speaks velocity to me. Right? Yes. And velocity is the derivative of position. So, this is particle R. So I'm going to bring in my R of T. We talked about this in one of the previous videos. I like recopying my function just so I have what I'm working with. So if R of T equals T cubed minus 60 squared and the rest of that polynomial that I've now read twice. Um, I'm looking for the derivative. So R prime of T equals 3T squared. This is a really nice power rules. 2 times 6 is 12 and subtract 1. So minus 12T plus nine, and then the derivative of three is zero, which I'm not going to write, but you can. Um, and then we want to know where it's moving right. Well, we really need to find where it's moving right and where it's moving left. We can take care of all of that. And so I'm going to set my derivative equal to zero to find out where our potential places it changes direction. And I'm going to factor a three out. Where's that three going, Verge? Uh, divide by zero and it's gone. Oh, you're well, going to leave it there. Okay. Oh, well, no, I was, I know. I'm just going to, yeah. I'm not dividing by zero. I'm dividing it into the zero, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But zero divided it, by it, it's still it's, zero. It goes into that zero. And I, I sometimes I'll draw teeth in my zero and it just num num num. And it's up to three. Um, and then, um, I need to solve a quadratic for zero here. And, I've got this positive three and I need factors of three that add up to negative four. That's how I factor. You can factor other ways. And they're all lots of valid ways. And so I get factors of negative three and negative one. So T minus three times T minus one. And so my potential resting points for this particle are three and one. Still haven't answered where it's moving right. So I'm gonna do a little sign analysis. I do not have to label this. Um, but I'm going to. This is time t. Zero to six. Three is about halfway. Some would say exactly. And, uh, <laughs> and one's over there, a third of the way to three. Um, and you can plug into these. I like plugging into the factored form, or I, I sometimes I'll even do a graphic analysis since this is a parabola. But if I plug in numbers between zero and one, I'm going to get a negative and a negative. So that's positive. Uh, between one and three, like if I plug two in, I'm going to get a negative and a positive, which would be negative. And for numbers bigger than three, we'll get positive and positive. And so moving to the right on the x-axis is positive velocity. So we are moving to the right on zero, one, and three, six. They did, did they say to give reasoning? No. Oh my gosh, I Mark, I was just thinking the same thing. And, but I would go ahead and say it because our prime is positive there. Yeah, just to talk a little bit about that, like you can't just declare those intervals without any supporting work. Like every, oh, yes. every bit of what you're doing is going to earn certain points. And so you definitely want to show how you're getting those intervals, even if they don't say um, justify or explain your reasoning or show your work. And actually in the front of the test, it does say exactly that. This is answers with no supporting work very rarely earn earn any credit. So mm -hmm. um, I, I screwed up a little too far here. I need to bring P in. Um, 
For B, it says from zero to six, for all, find all times during which the two particles travel in opposite directions. Just because of that, I'm going to bring in that R is going right on zero, one, and three, six, and left on one, three. Just I'm going to need that information from part A. And then the other thing I need is I keep creeping my sheet up here. P of T is that two cosine of pi over four times T. Okay, now I can scoot up. So same idea, I, I wanna know the direction it's moving. I'm gonna need my velocity of P. So I'm gonna to wanna to find P prime of T. Two is a constant, so I don't have to do product rule. It's just along for the ride, I think. Mm -hmm. um, the derivative of cosine, well, if I remember correctly from my yellow sheet, that is the opposite of sine. And it would just be opposite of sine x if I had cosine x or cosine t. But we have a composition again. Mm -hmm. What's the rule, Verge? Chain rule. Chain multiply rule. by the derivative of what's inside. Yep. The derivative of pi over 4t is just pi over 4. So cleaning that up, I get negative pi over 2 sine of pi over 4t. And that's my p prime of t. And again, I want to... To find left to right, I kind of have to find where it stops. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to set that equal to zero. I'm not going to set my derivative equal to zero. I don't want to, I feel uncomfortable saying this whole expression always equals zero. So I do another line. I don't know how you feel about that. Um, I mean, I'm, I, it doesn't matter. I do it both. But ways. I am going to just divide this off again, like I divided the three. Uh huh. So I'm really looking for where sine of pi over 4t is zero. So pi over 4t is going to equal, when does sine equal zero? S sine zero. 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 Or pi. Or two or pi. Two pi. <laughs> or dot, dot. Um, I don't know how much I need yet. Well, I do because I've worked the problem, but in theory. Um, I'm going to multiply by 4 over pi. So t equals zero, and then I'm doing this. Multiply, multiply, and we get four, four, or eight, which is outside my zero to six. So the zero to four is what I need. Yep. And if I do my sign analysis of my sign, my t, my zero, and my six. And I only have to worry about four this time. So I only have to do two intervals. Um, from zero to four, this is a negative. If I visualize this graph, what does that negative do to that graph, Urge? It flips it upside down. It's doing something like that. So it's starting off going negative. So this, this first interval is my negative, which means we're going left. And this is my positive, which means I'm going right. So I'm left from zero to four and right from four to six. And if I compare that to this, well, from three to six, I'm going right here. From four to six, I'm going right with my P. This was P down here. So there's an overlap, right? From four to six, they're both going right. Mm -hmm. But from three to four, R is going, mm -hmm. R is going left, and P is going right, um, and then P is going left from zero to four. One to three is fine, but zero to one will be opposite as well. Mm -hmm. So those are my two intervals where they're traveling in opposite directions. Because the signs of the velocity are different. We're looking for where the signs are opposite, right? Mm -hmm. And you could draw these two number lines under each other. If I brought my number line back down, I could do that, line up my number lines and look for where the signs are opposite as well. The position of particle P at time T is given by P of T equals two cosine pi over four T still. So we've got the acceleration now. Well, I'm gonna import my velocity, right? We found the velocity was negative pi over two sine of pi over four T, is that right? Um, yeah. And we want the acceleration. So acceleration, this is my 
velocity of v, my acceleration of v, is going to be the second derivative of the parkable's position. So negative pi over 2, along for the ride again. It's just a constant multiplier. Derivative sine, cosine. simply cosine. And then that chain of pi over 4 occurs one last time here. Negative pi squared over 8, cosine of pi over 4. All right. So that's my acceleration formula. And they want the acceleration at time 3. So I'm just... I'm going to go ahead and call it the second derivative. You do want to make this relationship, by the way. It's very important. Talk about showing setup and showing work. I do want the reader of this work to know that I realize the second derivative is acceleration. Okay, we're going to have negative pi squared over 8, cosine of 3 pi over 4. I don't know. How do you, how do, you do cosine of 3 pi over 4, Verge? Do you have your reference uh, angles memorized? I, I, I picture the circle. I picture the unit circle. I know I'm in the second quadrant and cosine is negative there. I only really care about the sine. Right. Well, I guess it's, they want us to find the acceleration. So we do have to say negative. So we do have to know it's negative square root of two over two. But, and that is positive because it's a negative times a negative. So it's greater than zero. That's my reasoning. I've actually explained my reasoning already. Well, no, I've started to explain my reasoning. My acceleration is greater than zero. Um, going back, I know from part B that my velocity... Actually, I don't want to. I already labeled VP up there. P prime of three. Well, um, I it, I believe it was less than zero. Yes, it was negative. So mm -hmm. that was less than zero. Mm -hmm. And these are opposite signs. So velocity and acceleration are opposite signs, which means he is slowing down. Yep at time t equals three. Cool. All right, write, but do not evaluate an expression for the, and they didn't bring in a new function, but they have run in a new problem because now they're going to start talking about distance. This, the distance between the two particles. Well, the distance is going to be p minus r or r minus p because those are our two positions. The distance is a measurement, which means what, Verge? Well, it's not a vector, it's just a magnitude. So we need to think about it absolute value wise. So yeah, it's it's P minus R when P is bigger. If P if P is greater than R and if R is greater than P, but the way we fix that, of course, is we just say absolute Magic value. bars. <laughs> and, and I can do P minus R or R minus P. Um, I guess if I want to be formal, I can put P of T minus R of T. So that's my distance. And then I want the average value of a function. Well, the average value of a function is one over B minus A times the integral from A to B. I'm gonna use F of X DX. It's a general yellow sheet version of the average value of a function. Uh, the function I'm finding the average value of is this distance. It's with respect to time. And they want it from one to three. So A is being played by one in this play, and B is being played by three. And there is our last answer of our 2024 videos. That is an expression for the average distance between two points on the interval from one to three. Thank you all for your time. You made it through all two hours. Congratulations. Good luck on the exam. We hope you Thank do you great. We hope you do great. Just kind of just show what you know and just do the best that you can.